let's become more and more familiar with the nature of reality and with the nature of our minds and that's what we're doing here with a really simple um, practice and approach to recognizing what's going on and what's going on right now for us and uh, how do we make sense of it you know what's the what's the meaning how do we know how to function and be in the world in a powerful loving um, clear way and so the balance view teaching is really just a way for you to discover the natural clarity of your mind your ability to relate with ease and openness and um, just just care and we have all sort of had glimpses of this throughout our life I know I had you know, I had glimpses of, of great clarity of great bliss of great um, love and care and um, and capacity as well knowing that I could deal with situations but that recognition was always fleeting you know, there was no way that I could hold on to that sort of sense of ease or calm or happiness um, and so that's in a way what I spent my time doing was chasing after these really um, I guess you could say extreme states extreme states of happiness or bliss or um, pleasure or clarity or oneness that's a good one chasing after the recognition of oneness or I'm getting it for like a little bit and then it would slip away and I'd be chasing after it again and um, and then hand in hand with that of course went the uh, trying to avoid the unpleasant or the negative things in life so unpleasant feelings and thoughts and situations and um, people and places that I felt brought up this negativity for me and so that's one way to, to live life and that's the way that I was living life until I met the balance view training and then I was introduced to the actual nature of my mind and suddenly I understood why I'd been living in the way that I had been living um, suddenly I was able to understand why I'd had glimpses of something that was greater or bigger or um, and also understanding why I'd kept looking and why had I kept searching even though I'd have only have had these sort of glimpses of something that was um, just much bigger than my ordinary understanding these sort of fleeting glimpses that had always disappeared but I knew that they had some significance so I knew that there was something to search after there was something more than my mundane experience and understanding of life and I read loads of books about it and I love reading the books but reading the books it, it really remained as mostly a kind of intellectual understanding it wasn't my lived experience and then coming to the balance view training and having this introduction and I was introduced to the nature of my mind with a really simple um, suggestion just to stop thinking for a moment and notice what remains you just pause your thoughts you stop thinking you notice what remains there's an alertness there's a cognizance there's something that's aware of the next thought that arises spontaneously this is open intelligence or awareness this is the basis and the essence of your experience and of who you are what's looking through your eyes and you can't really identify it you can't quite name it or pin it down and yet it's naturally present it's, it's always there and how do you know it's always there well this is the practice of short moments and this is the um, the core practice in the balance view training taking short moments whenever you naturally remember in a relaxed way easygoing way um, just to stop describing everything that's going on because there's always a lot going on to describe in my experience so just pause that for a moment and acknowledge the awareness or open intelligence that is naturally present just that just this really simple practice and you can go throughout your day and you can test out what happens when you do this when you switch the focus from the obsessive concern with all of the thinking all of the feeling all of the sensing and the complete focus on that just very gently shifting it just for a short moment onto the basis the open intelligence that is the essence and the source and the ground of everything that we're experiencing and so I heard that instruction and I tested it out and I was amazed because immediately it gave me a different perspective on my thoughts on my emotions and on my experience 
it basically gave me the key to understanding what was going on and why I had been behaving the way I'd been behaving. And the reason was is that I had taken everything I would ex as it had been experiencing to be somehow separate, to have an independent nature. So for example, um, I would wake up <coughs> in the morning and I would feel cranky or grumpy or tired. And I'd have that thought or that feeling, you know, waking up and the eyes are a bit grainy and the body's a bit achy and not feeling very positive, I'd rather stay in bed. Just waking up with that, that thought or that experience. And then from the conventional perspective, I would need to know, well, what do I do about this? And what do I do about this? What, how, you know, should I, and then I'd have the next thought, you know, well, should I tell my work colleagues that I'm feeling a bit grumpy or cranky just so that they don't bother me or they know to give me some space and let me have my coffee or five or whatever it takes to get me going and you know how do I deal with it or what you know what do I pretend I'm okay and or, you know all of these different ideas so you can see there the pattern of having one thought or one experience and then trying to make sense of it with other thoughts and other descriptions and it's a basically it's a never-ending process because then you'll say something to your colleagues and the next thought might be, oh, God, I don't know if I should have shared that with them. You know, maybe I should have kept it to myself or maybe I'm just making it into something that it really isn't. And, and again, it just continues on. So with a short moment, when that thought of that experience of feeling grumpy or cranky comes up in the, mo in the morning, you, you can test out the, the practice there. And the practice of just stopping the descriptions around that feeling recognizing open intelligence and recognizing that the crankiness or the grumpiness arises inseparable from the open intelligence by which, in which and as which it's known. Like um, recognizing the inseparability of um, heat from the fire or um, the color blue from the sky. You can't take out your experience from the open intelligence by which it's known. The experience, what we could call data, are the dynamic energy of open intelligence. And the reason why this is important to recognize is because immediately we can relax. Just for a short moment, I can see that I can just allow my grumpiness or crankiness just to be as it is. I don't need to work out what to do with it. <clears throat> and for me, that was a great relief. I didn't need to jump on this train of thought and try and work out my sort of strategy for the day of dealing with it. Do I tell people? Do I not tell people? Instead, I tapped into the immediate ease of being that was available, inseparable from the feeling of grumpiness. Now, how incredible is that? Inseparable from feeling grumpy is great ease and great openness and great clarity when we recognize what the basis and essence of the grumpy feeling is. So this is incredible because what we're beginning to see is that nothing needs to change in our experience for us to recognize the ease that is always present and always available. And we get to know that this is true through repeating these short moments. Short moments repeated many times until this open intelligence is obvious at all times, in all experience, with all, all descriptions. And then practically, um, in terms of deciding like, what do we share with people then? You know, now I can recognize that I can relax with these negative feelings and thoughts and that I don't have to do anything with them. Well, how do I speak to people or what should I share with people? With those thoughts, the same practice applies. Take short <laughs> moments of allowing them to be as they are. Rather than then having the thought, well, should I share about my grumpiness? And if I share, then this might happen, and if I don't share, then that might happen. Rest naturally there. What's the basis of those thoughts? It's the same open intelligence, like the same way that all planets and stars are contained within the same vastness of sky. There isn't a separate sky for each planet and star. There's a vast expanse inclusive of all planets and stars. And this is the same relationship with our mind to all of our experience. And when you relax with those thoughts, what opens up is the clear seeing and the natural wisdom of your mind. Because you're relaxed, you're not trying to do something with what's occurring. So for example, if I felt grumpy, one of the reasons that I would tell people would, um, 
just to make myself feel a little bit better about it or just to kind of put up a barrier. You know, I'm grumpy, leave me alone. I'm grumpy, beware, you know, give me a bit of space. And when I started relaxing with those thoughts, I saw that actually there's nothing to defend here. I can feel grumpy, I don't have to do anything with it, and I can still show up in an open, um, easy-going way, which is incredible. It's like the opposite to what I'd learned. I'd learned if I'm grumpy, then that means I need to play it out in the way that I relate, either by not telling people and kind of bottling it up, or by telling people and kind of then they can know how to deal with it. When I allowed it to be as it was, it was so powerful that I could feel this grumpiness and yet when I recognized the basis of it as open intelligence, it didn't have the power over me that I thought it had. It was like, um, it was like mist evaporating in space. The grumpiness was another fleeting experience, like all experience. It was just coming and going amidst the flow of all of my data of that morning. And when I didn't hold on to it or try and do something with it, it just self-released naturally. And maybe it came back again, but then it would self-release again. And from that vantage, I could just be relaxed about it. And when I was relaxed about it, I had access to just a clarity about what I wanted to share with whom. And there was no fixed way I had to do it. I didn't have to take up a fixed perspective and say, when I feel grumpy, then I need to do this. What I was opening up to was the spontaneous wisdom of grumpiness, which is accessible when I allow it to be as it is, when I don't elaborate all these stories about what it is, what it means, where it came from, how I need to relate when I'm feeling this way. And then all options are open, and maybe you will tell your colleagues, and maybe you won't. But it'll be from a really relaxed, caring, loving space, not from a space of needing to tell people how you feel so that you feel a little bit better or that for me I, one of my hopes was that by telling people how tired or grumpy I was maybe I could just suck them down a little bit into my grumpiness and that felt kind of a little bit better not really but a little bit and um, and also it was basically reinforcing this idea and this is the most extreme position is that I am a fixed individual and I have to do all of these things with my appearances, with my sensations, with my thoughts and emotions. Like you could say this is the most extreme extreme. Like I have this individual identity and I have all of my sensations and experiences and by telling other people about them then I reinforce this identity and I try and convince other people that's who I am and I try and convince myself that's who I am. I was, I was brilliant at it. I was so good. I had this whole story about who I am and my life and the amazing things that I've done and my incredible experience and personality. And, <laughs> and it, was, it, was, um, it was so limiting. It was so limiting because I had this story and then I had to live it. Then I had to like be it. <laughs> like whether I wanted to or not, it's like... Like one story might be, I'm grumpy in the mornings. And then when the feeling of grumpiness came up, I was, yeah, right, I'm grumpy this morning. That's the kind of person I am. And it was just limited, you know, rather than accessing the spontaneous wisdom of free-flowing reality, which is actually the nature of everything already, and we all know that, immediately I clamped down into a very narrow perspective. And it's... It, it felt limiting. It, didn't, it never felt quite right. But that's the role I would find myself playing out. And so if you're interested in genuine freedom, freedom in immediate perception, the freedom of allowing yourself to be exactly as you are and tapping into this great wisdom that we've all had glimpses of, that we all know we actually have access to, then this is the right place for you. This is the training that will allow you to access that with increasing um, stability and obviousness in everyday life. Not separate from your everyday life, not separate from your grumpiness or crankiness, but recognizing the basis and essence of all of your experience. This stable ground of being. 
and it's a systematic approach. If you participate in the training here, this will become more obvious to you. Amazing. <laughs>